I'm going to do back-to-back -back videos on the two exotics I place as the top two from the Witch Queen expansion. And honestly, these two exotic reviews this week, they're probably the most important reviews of the Witch Queen launch on my channel. As far as ranking, they're interchangeable. One could be number one overall, the other one could be. These two are some of the best exotics in the game. Today's review is about the Osmiomancy gloves on Shadebinder Warlock. You have to use them a certain way. There's a trick to them. Very important thing that you need to do that I don't see anyone talking about, because there's two ways to use them, and you've probably been using and seeing one way, but the other way is what you need to be doing. I've also seen some slander about these. Do not get it twisted, these are incredible. They're one of the best exotics in Destiny 2. I'm gonna show you, and I'm very confident in that. Elite in PvE, very, very good in PvP. They're a hard counter in PvP. There are two very different ways to run them. One for PvE, and for PvP requires entirely different aspects and fragments. On mine, I will masterwork them, but I don't have the materials soon on that, but the exotic perk is Fervid Cold Snap. Your Cold Snap grenades have an additional charge that recharges quicker on direct impact. The Seeker's spawn from Cold Snap travels further. So two grenade charges, a further seeking Cold Snap, and this can be used with Bleak Watcher turrets as well. And there's the chance you're gonna get more grenade energy back. So I have a great basic build to show you, and you can loop these Cold Snaps in PvE. You can loop Bleak Watchers if you want if you do it correctly. So for PvE, that's where I want to start. This is what I'm doing the entire video in PvE. For the mods, you want three firepower. Those are solar armor pieces. While charged with light, regain a portion of your grenade energy when you use your grenade, consuming a stack of charge with light. It stacks with multiple copies, so we have three of them. Next armor piece, elemental charge. It could be any element. Become charged with light by picking up an elemental well. If the elemental well type matches your subclass element, you gain two stacks of charge with light. And the last one needs to be a stasis piece for elemental shards. Stasis shards count as stasis elemental wells for you. On your Shade Binder, what I do is Bleak Watcher and Glacial Harvest. Glacial Harvest is non-negotiable. You must have it. Instead of Bleak Watcher, you can go Frost Pulse. But with Glacial Harvest, freezing targets create stasis shards. Higher tier combatants create more shards. So this goes with the build. Picking up those shards gets you two stacks of charge with light to use with your three stacks of firepower. And by the way, with this basic setup, you can fill both champion mods. You can have your reserves, your finders. The four fragments I use are Hedrons, because you're literally in a constant state of it, dramatically increased weapon stability, aim assist, mobility, resilience, and recovery after freezing a target with stasis. It's up all the time. Then Fissures, Torment, and Chains. You can also have Refraction because you're always going to be defeating frozen targets to give you class ability energy, or you can go Whisper of Bonds. Again, always defeating frozen targets is going to give you a little bit more super energy. Finally, Conduction. Nearby stasis shards track your position. That way, when you freeze a target, those shards come up, they're just going to come right to you. Not bad picks. No wrong way. I am also running 10 Discipline. I highly recommend that you do that. So here's how you use the gloves. The Cold Snap has a 58 second cooldown at tier 10. Here's the trick. The Cold Snap gives you grenade energy when it hits a target. And sometimes when you chain multiple targets, it's going to give you a little bit more. But look at this example. This is the proof. We have an overload. I have two fresh grenade charges. No firepower mods are on. This is just base to show you. If the Cold Snap is thrown, hits the ground, it seeks, tags the champion, you get a little bit over half that Cold Snap grenade back, which on its own is great. But Bungie is very deliberate with perks and keywords. Your cold snap recharges much quicker on direct impact, so that's exactly what you need to do. You need to actually pop them with a cold snap grenade, because when you actually hit them with the direct impact, look what happens. It is fully back, for free, and that's what you saw in the opening clip. And from right here, the build is up, it's ready. Harvest has shards on the ground from freezing the target. You pick up that shard, when you throw the next cold snap, times three firepower is going to make up, let's say if you miss a direct hit, infinite loop. You can do things like straight just stun lock champions with freeze over and over and over with complete safety. The other part is the Bleak Watcher, and it's no doubt obviously S tier in PvE. It's the same thing. You would throw the Bleak Watcher, just make sure your second cold snap makes a direct impact, and just go every other one from there. You're going to have so many up that they'll despawn. This isn't counting demo weapons, anything like that, because at base here, you do have infinite looping. I did the entire raid with these gloves and my team was just laughing because all I was doing was throwing cold snaps or I was just peppering the field with Bleak Watchers. And come to find out there, the Bleak Watcher goes right for Rolk's staff and it takes the buff for you, which I didn't like. And then at the end, I was probably world's first Shadebinder super in Final Stand. I had a good time with it. It was great. These gloves are GM ready. They are solo hard law sector ready. They're end game ready. You have a lot of freedom with what you can do with these gloves. You can throw the cold snap down, freeze a whole bunch of enemies. You can throw bleak watchers to the side. You can make direct impacts to try to loop them on harder targets, more health targets. 
Just make sure you throw it right at them. It's a huge difference maker. And at first look, before I got my hands on these gloves, I was like, well, you can get two Bleak Watchers. That's worth a pick itself for higher end content. But since you could do this, skyrockets. You have to try it. Must have gloves. Get them as soon as possible. For the Crucible, they're extremely good as well. And the same technique is applied. You're gonna get Cold Snap Energy. If it hits the ground, seeks towards the target, then freezes them, it gives you a little bit. But if you do the direct impact right on the enemy, drop to the ground, it seeks, it freezes, it's gonna give you more. There's a big difference between the two. And if you listen closely, close your eyes for a second. That's the sound of Bungie balancing PvE and PvP separately. It can be done and they're continually doing so. So for the Shade Binder in PvP, 100 Discipline, your aspects are gonna be switched to Ice Flare Bolts and Frost Pulse. This is the Freeze Rift and the Bolts Shadow a frozen target spawn seekers that tracks and freezes other nearby targets two important things to know about the osmiomancy gloves in the crucible number one the cold snap acts like it did day one beyond light but on steroids it is juiced it's fast it seeks far it takes crazy angles the second thing, it is a hard counter to Void 3.0. The Invisible Hunters doesn't care if they're in the area. It's going to seek them out. It doesn't care that they're invisible. It acts like they're a regular enemy. So the moment I hear that sound, the cold snaps on the ground. And two, as far as Void 3.0, it counters Bastion. When you throw the Cold Snap, it will drop in front of the shield, travel up the shield over it back down, freeze the Titan on the other side. It will even go over multiple shields. It's hilarious. So when that shield goes down or you see that shield, you can throw that Cold Snap and push because it will freeze them. So you get a shot in with your shotgun, melee, whatever it is. It's going to freeze at any moment or you can wait for the freeze to actually happen and it's a one shot melee final blow. That's why shatter is important with fissures because when they're grouped up, that shatter will take out multiple targets at once. Stasis is the hard counter to Void 3.0 and I'm going to take feedback from this video and the next review because there are more things to hard counter Void 3.0 and if you guys are interested I can make a video talk about that list in detail but these gloves amazing they're so fast on the ground and you don't see cold snaps anymore and people aren't playing for them and you need to remember you must jump in the air when these things are out because if you don't you're gonna get frozen you have to if they're on the ground you have to be up and it does it from so far away even if they are in the air 15 meters from you, they've lost accuracy in the air. You can still get good shots on them. In a lot of situations in CQC, close quarters combat, it's the same play by your enemy. Close corner, there's red on the radar. There's a strong chance nine out of 10 times they're coming in a straight line with a shotgun. You just assume it at this point, but with the seeker distance, how fast it does it, it doesn't care about invisibility. It doesn't care about the void bastion shields or overshield. It's a walk in the park. They play to you 90% of the time. Hard counter. Not to mention the Eisler bolt right after. Goes one enemy to the next, to another. Shatter doubles and so on. I've been playing and seriously, every lobby, I was the only Shadebinder. In a play session, a friend and I jingle. We were both running these gloves against a four stack, three Invis Hunters and a Bastion Void Titan. A little over midway through the game, they dipped. They were gone because everything that they tried to do, they were frozen. And on your frozen enemy, for the shatter kills, you want a special weapon. Fusion's great, shotgun's great or just melee them. I just recently put Enhanced Demolitionist on my Ragnil D. I'm not looking back, it's crazy good. And since it's stasis, the kit itself still does great things to supers. The Freeze Rift, the Cold Snap as they're rushing in, even the Bubble, great gloves, top tier. My main play has been this Enhanced Demo Shotgun, use my other weapon regular, and the moment I am being rushed or the moment I push the Cold Snap's on the ground, rest is history. It's great. People sooner or later are going to realize that stasis is the hard counter. And I do suggest you mess with some builds if you want to try something different or if you're getting a little bored with Void 3.0. And before I forget, there's a little deal that when you die, I guess it's a bug. Sometimes it takes your second grenade charge. When you spawn back up, that grenade's gone and it starts recharging. I hope that they fix it, especially if you're on Bleak Watcher, because that has a long cooldown. But, especially in PvE, you should have no issues getting it right back. And this bug is the same for the Crucible as well. But these gloves right here woke up a sleeping giant. The Shade Binder has always been really good in PvE with the Bleak Watcher. And the Cold Snaps, really. You have complete ad control, and now you have stun locks with freeze in PvE. You can still run all the mods that you need to. And my examples for triple firepower is just that, an example. There's many more builds to make, many more things to add with other fragments. And back to PvP, just brutal. I'm loving it. Straight up, I think I'm going to play stasis for the rest of the season. Because it comes down to three things. Number one, you can just do your own thing and have fun in the Crucible. That's fine. Number two is to play with Void 3.0. That's what the majority of players are doing. You're fighting fire with fire. Like in Trials, lots of teams are going triple void. 
avoid. Oh, they have a Bastion shield down. Let's put ours down. They go invisible. We go invisible. You go on your flank. Lots of hide and go seek with overshields. Or number three, no. Literally fight fire with ice. There's nothing in the Void 3.0 kit that scares Stasis. If anything, Stasis is the one that scares Void. And if you dip your toe into the new things that Stasis got this season, you're going to see that. And the next exotic review is going to push that even further. As of right now, the Warlock mains and players that do play Warlock and a second and third character, I highly encourage you to go get these on Arms Day with the Legendary Lost Sector, like Mission Critical, ASAP. Because with these, very good in solo play, very good in team play. In the Crucible, they hard counter Void. You can run it over. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about the Osmiomancy gloves down below. Talk about builds, what you think about them. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.